Oh, but there's a hospital in here, so would you like a bedpan, Mr. Murphy? He said, do I have to do my own cooking? <laughs> the doctor he said my wife and I haven't loved each other for years he said take these tablets put one or tea on the bed tonight he put 10 in he put 83 in his own tea <laughs> and the wife jumped out of the middle of the bench and I want a man I want a man he jumped out of bed after said so do I <laughs> no, I went to school with an Irish lad this Irish lad he was good at woodwork two years woodwork and he made a poker <laughs> this is just silly bugger, you've got an electric fire! <laughs> My little boy said, Dad, I came home from school, Dad, and they called me Mum, Dad. <laughs> Sitting on the settee, Dad, with the milkman, Dad, they was kissing and cuddling, Dad, all afternoon, Dad. I said, don't tell me now, son, tell me tonight when we're watching television and your mother's there. He said, I will, Dad. So we're sitting watching television. He said, I got something to tell you, Dad. I said, what is it, son? He said, I came home from school, Dad. And I caught my mum, Dad, sitting on the settee, Dad, with the milkman, Dad. They was kissing and cuddling, Dad, all afternoon, Dad. Just like you, me Auntie Margaret, when my mum was in hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember when you were at school? I, 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 was, I remember when I was at school. You used to have these inspectors used to come round, you know, and see how the teacher was doing. And I, I was in school one day, and the teacher was there, the inspector sitting down watching him. The teacher said to one of the little lads, he said, uh, who knocked down the walls of Jericho? <laughs> this kid looked at him, he said, he said I never. <laughs> teacher said, all right, sit down, son. The inspector called, he said, what's going on? He said, you just asked that kid who knocked down the walls of Jericho. He said, he never. You told him to sit down. He said, he never rep reprimanded him even. <laughs> he said, you never reprimanded him. So what's going on? The teacher said, well, uh, he said, I've known Jones for four years. He said, if he says he never did it, he never did it. <laughs> <laughs> the inspector threw a wobbler. He went, he went off to the headmaster. He said, I've just been in 4 G. He said, one of the teachers asked a child who knocked down the walls of Jericho. He said, he never did it. He said, he asked the teacher what was going on. He said, he'd known him for four years. If he said he never did it, he never did it. <laughs> He said, what exactly is going on in this school? Headmaster said, listen, I don't want any trouble here. He said, these walls are Jericho. He said, what if I send a couple of brickies round Monday morning? <laughs> oh, seriously, though. No. This fellow went to the uh, DHSS and the clerk says, can I help you? He said, well, I put a claim in 11 weeks ago for this uh, industrial deafness. <laughs> and I've heard nothing yet. <laughs> One Irish fella said to his mate, he said, what would you do, Mick, if you broke your arm in two places? He said, I wouldn't go in them two places again. I think I hate. What about the Irish was on that programme, Mastermind? And Maggoty Magazine says. <laughs> Who was born in a stable and had thousands of followers? Dead Red Rome. <laughs> <laughs> he said, in Greek mythology, who was half animal and half man? He said, Buffalo Bill. <laughs> and what does ITN stand for? He said, in grown toenail. <laughs> <laughs> Name two days of the week beginning with T. He said, today and tomorrow. <laughs> University Challenge, it's Belfast versus Dublin. After 12 weeks, they're neck and neck. Nil nil. <laughs> Bamba Gas going ask the questions. Paddy Murphy, captain of Dublin University, reading gas meters. <laughs> Here is your start of a 10. A question on Greek mythology. Who was half man and half goat? Is it Billy the Kid? <laughs> Oh, 
He said, where would you find a ten-ton tortoise? I said, not very far from where you lost it. <laughs> Who was the first woman on earth? He says, give me a clue. He said, Annapolis, a Granny Smith. <laughs> Can you name me a small frog who sings on television? He said, Charles Aznavour. <laughs> How do you spell paint? He said, what colour? <laughs> he said, it's got five letters. The clue is Old MacDonald had one. He said, farm. How are you spelling that? He says, E-I-E-I-O. <laughs> Fellow walked in a pub, there's two Irish fellas there. He said, Murphy, he said, what? He said, what's got four legs and stinks? He said, I don't know. He said, you and him. <laughs> Murphy said, I'll try that on Sean when he comes in. Sean's come in, he said, Sean, he said, what? He said, what's got four legs and stinks? He said, I give up. He said, me and him. <laughs> Woman went into a, a pet shop. She said, I'm after a dog, really, you know, a guard dog to mind the house. He said, madam, don't look any further. Never mind dogs. This parrot here will do the job for you. She said, a parrot? Marvellous. Mind your house for you, because, you know, the old women, you know, they, they always go to that bingo, don't they? Have you stood in something, love? <laughs> no. The, um... <laughs> you you want to wipe your shoe, love? Yeah. I'm not Maxwell, love, I'm a bit younger. <laughs> I've lost my place now. <laughs> so, this woman's in this pet shop. And he says, Madam, that, that parrot will look after you. She said, are you sure? Guard your house for you. She said, I'll have it. What do we do? Before you go out at night, just open the door and the parrot will look after you. Guard the house, it talks. So she's took it home, she's put it on the perch, she's gone out to bingo. As they do, you know, pensioners, don't they? They sit there with the 12 books. <laughs> Cost them 18 pound. <laughs> and they argue about a price of a lettuce. <laughs> so, she's got this parrot to guard the house. She's out an hour, the window latch went, the parrot was on the door. The window opened, the parrot, Got out, he flew over to the phone. <laughs> a leg come through the window, the parrot has lifted the receiver off with his beak. Got its wing. Nine, nine, nine. And the voice said, emergency, what service do you require? He said, who is a pretty boy? Car crash, two young couples in the car run off. The police get the car and all that's in the car is a monkey. And the judge is dead embarrassed. He said, how can I interview a monkey in court? He said, this monkey's brilliant. He said, were you in the car crash? <laughs> he said, how many people in the car? <laughs> she two fellas, two girls. <laughs> He said, what were they doing in the car? <laughs> he said, they were making love in the back. He said, what about the couple in the front? He said, the couple making love in the front. He said, what the hell were you doing all this time? <laughs> So there's this Liverpool docker on safari in the jungle with 300 shapers carrying the gear. And as these two dockers are hacking away through the jungle with swords, one docker said to his mate, he says, uh, we'll make camp here. His mate says, I don't want a coffee. He says, no, you fool. <laughs> he says, I mean, we'll bed down for the night. And they bed down for the night, and the following morning when they woke up, the 300 shapers had gone with all the tech. <laughs> <laughs> 
You know, they took everything except a chip pan. Some potatoes in the box of matches. His mate says, light a fire, we'll have chips for breakfast. He said, what are we going to do for fat? He says, I'll go in the jungle and see what I can find. He says, while you're there, see if you can get a paper. He says, okay. So he goes in the jungle, and he comes back 10 minutes after with this very tall two-foot pygmy. He said, now get the pygmy on the spit over the fire and turn him very slow. We'll use the fat off him for chips. He says, I'll go in the jungle and see if I can get any vinegar. When he comes back, his mates go and tend to the dozen with the spit and the pygmy. He says, I told you to turn him slow. He says, I was, but he was pinching the chips. <laughs> So the voice from heaven said to the Corinthians, You want the commandments? What are they? Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. Oh no, Corinthians love killing and stealing to the Romans. You want the commandments? What are they? Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's <coughs> wife. You're joking. Who you done there? You with the glasses, what's your name? Moses. What tribe do you belong to? To the Jews. You want the commandments? How much are they? <laughs> Nothing. Give us ten. You've got to look after yourself, you know, I'm telling you now. Kept up past feet the other week, had all his fingers surveyed off. <laughs> unsevered, unsevered. <laughs> and they rushed him off to the hospital. The doctor said, you silly chappy, if you'd have brought your fingers with you, we could send them back on. He said, I couldn't pick them up. <laughs> And they tell you I got an odd pet, you know, I got an octopus, you know. Oh, yeah, I've got an octopus. Cost me 23 quid, long time ago, mate. <coughs> my mate said, give us, hand." He said, Jerry, what do you want? He said, well, I said, well, tell you what, you give me hand to clean out my octopus and I'll come down and give you hand to dig the garden. He said, all right. And he said, what have I got to do? I said, all you got to do is take the octopus out. He said, put him on the floor, clean the bath out, put the octopus back in. He said, how do I get him back here? I said, well, it's your fault. He said, how do you do that? I said, well, clean it out. And of course, he's picking a octopus out. Look, puts him on the floor, rubbing the bath out. Of course, when he comes to pick the octopus up, he can. He's got eight legs. And they're all stuck to the floor. And he's putting a shovel underneath him and trying to lift him up. And the octopus is putting the legs down. He said, I can't do it. I said, give it to me here. Got the shovel. I went, rack on the top of his head. He went, oh! I said, get in there, you <laughs> bugger. <I said. laughs> Fill him in a cake shop, he said. How much is those two cakes? Fill him on the counter, he said, 50p. He said, how much is one? He said, 30p. He said, well, I'll have the other one. <laughs> Irish fella walked into this uh, shoe shop, bought himself a pair of torture shell shoes, took him four hours to walk out of the shop. <laughs> <laughs> Fell in prison, he said, it's cold in this cell. The warder says, I'll put you another bar on. <laughs> <laughs> what about the little fella's crawling through the desert and he's going, water? I'm lost. Water? I'm lost. Water? Next minute, head. Mush. Shh. There's this Eskimo coming over the sandals. Sixteen Austrians and all his family go, Mush. The fellow went, I'm lost. He went, you're lost. <laughs> And the two old dears were lying in the geriatric ward and she said to her mate, she said, <laughs> Oh, see, <laughs> I'm sick of life. <laughs> I'm, sick. I'm sick of lying here. Week after week, nothing exciting happens. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do tonight? I'm going to do a streak. <laughs> she said, you're not, she said, I am. So the men's ward up, past nine and they've had the cocoa. <laughs> Half past nine, she was stood by the bed like a crepe bandage. <laughs> and she made a run for it. She made a run for it through the men's ward. <laughs> And these two old fellas were lying in bed, the one went, Harry! Oh, I got to... <laughs> did you see that then? He said, I did, what was she wearing? He said, I don't know, but he didn't half need ironing.
Because where I do live, we live on the banks of the Severn, you know, and we've got the fishermen down there now, you know. And I was driving along there the other day and I stopped and have a walk along the bank because we've got the Ale fishermen as well coming on. And this big fat fella fell in, mate. Big one, mate. Quicker to jump over him and walk round it. And my mate said, give us hand to drag him out. We got him halfway up the bank and couldn't get no more. I said, ha, hop along and get a ambulance. And you give him this your artificial perspiration, he said. I got back 20 minutes later and my mates are pumping away at this fat fella and the water's a gushing out of his mouth, mate. I said, good God, you're having a job there. He said, oh, he said, I've been pumping away at him for 20 minutes yet and the water's still a gushing out of his mouth. He said, I don't know where it's coming from. I looked over the bank. I said, if you don't get his backside out the river, I said, you'll pump it dry. I said, <laughs> Cosimodo went to Lourdes to get rid of his ump and the priest said strip off and you go under the waterfall and sing a hymn. Cosimodo says I know there is him, I know there is a green hill fell away. And he strips off and went on the waterfall and he forgot his hymn because the water was that cold when it hit his ump. <laughs> he sang the desert song and come out with two umps. <laughs> Uh, and the papers are great now, aren't they? Win a million pound in the Daily Mirror. Two artists are that, digging the motorway. away. Pat said to Mick, have you seen the Daily Mirror? He went, oh, yes. <laughs> he said, you can win a million pound. <laughs> it's a lot of money, isn't it? <laughs> he said, what would you do if we won a million pound? He went, oh, oh. I can't begin to think. <laughs> Last minute, this tractor went past with a load of hay on. He went, that's the first thing to do. <laughs> Send me grass away to get cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm walking down the road today. I'm walking down the road today and a big fella walked towards me. Got a big tulip hanging out of his lapel right past his kneecap. <laughs> he said, hello, you. <laughs> I said, hello. Is it if you can tell me what this is hanging out of my lapel right past my kneecap? Is it you can kiss me? I said, it's a cabbage. He <laughs> said, that's near enough. Have you, have you ever been sitting in the house and somebody knocks on your door just when you're watching the television and the important part's coming up? And you hear bang, bang, bang on the door. You think, who's that now? I open the front door, there's a fellow there. I said, what do you want? He said, have you got a vacuum? I said, no, I haven't, I said, but I've got a little U-bank. <laughs> At that, he tipped the big bag of soot over me front hall car. He said, hey, 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 hey. I said, what you doing? He said, don't worry about the soot. He said, I've got a vacuum here, it's magic. I said, it better be, we've had the electric cut off two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I had to go to the doctors this week as well. That's the doctors. You can't go to the doctors now, can you? You have to phone up, make an appointment. Do you have to do that up here? Yeah. Yeah. You have to phone Hello, doctor. Yes, sir. Uh, thinking of having a heart attack next Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> and and you, you go to the health centre now, don't you? Uh, you go to the health centre in Liverpool, you know, and there's loads of prams outside, you know, full of lead and copper. I goes in the doctor's rise. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah, I, I didn't have any clothes on. He didn't even look at me. He's writing something out. I'm standing there. He looked up. He said, uh, yes, miss. <laughs> it was a cold day, you know. <laughs> he examined me. He said, you've got Alice. I said, what's that? He said, I don't know, but Christopher Robin went down with it. <laughs> She's eight months pregnant. He's walked up to the four-year-old lad. I said, Mummy. I said, what, son? What's that? She said, that's your new baby brother or sister. I said, where did he get it? She said, your daddy gave it me. <clears throat> he went, oh. He ran out into the garden where his dad was. He said, Dad. I said, what, son? He said, do you know that baby you gave Mummy? He said, yeah. He said, she's eating it. <laughs> <laughs> this, um, this 
a Irish fella. This Irish fella won the pools, you know. And his mate says, was well, it now then, Paddy, a cruise? He said, it is not. He said, I'm going to spend a lot of money on these elocution lessons. He said, I'm sick of the English taking the mickey out of us. <laughs> so he went over to Ireland and he come back, you know, he spent about £15,000 learning to speak proper. <laughs> and he come back to Liverpool and he walked in his shop, he says, Good morning. How the devil are you? <laughs> and this scouser says, eh, I'm all right, like why? <laughs> he said, I want the largest box of fondant creams you've got. He said, we don't sell them, Paddy. Daddy, how do you know I'm Irish? He said, this is a butcher's. Do <laughs> <laughs> you get it? This Protestant wanted to marry this Jewish girl. Right? He said, well, you'll have... <laughs> he said, what you'll have to do, he says, you'll have to go to church every Saturday, right, and see the rabbi. So I went to see the rabbi. The rabbi said, you want to be a Jew? Right. He said, kneel down in front, sprinkle water on him. He said, you're not a Protestant, you're a Jew. You're not a Protestant, speak the words, not holy water. You're not a Protestant, you're a Jew, right? He says, now come here every Saturday and don't eat pork. <laughs> so three weeks later, his wife comes home from work. She smells meat cooking. She goes into the back kitchen. Here's her husband with a frying pan with a big pork chop in it. And he's sprinkling water and he's going, you're not a pork chop, you're a kipper. <laughs> Two Irish fellas playing snooker. They hadn't put a ball down for two hours. One said to the other, should we cheat? <laughs> so one said, nobody's looking. <laughs> Take that wooden triangle off. <laughs>